You have no new notifications or reminders. Jill wants to buy a fan even though it's winter. Buying one will prevent her from getting too distracted. Nano Camo! Oh, we don't have enough money for all this. Yeah, so this is the Kotatsu. There's like a cloth here, and there's a desk, and then underneath, there is a heater for the cold winter days. Can I touch anything here? No. Okay, well I got a bunch of money. How do I use the Nano Camo? Oh! Customize! Nano Camo app! Incredible, says Augmented Eye. Nano Camo is a company founded in 2068 and the pioneer of the nano machine fabric capable of real-time texture swap. Meant for military use, we bring our products to the general public at the most affordable prices. So just decoration? It's not really there, but it'll make you feel like it's there. Camo Ten is our mascot. She's designed by veteran character designer from Sukeban Games, Kiridin51. Wow, even got like birthdays and the three sizes. Likes Musashi Battleship, Tactic Cool Fashion, Peach Cake. By the way, Skiban Games? Skiban is Japanese for a girl who's a delinquent. Wait, so how do I use this? Customize. It costs money! No! No! I don't mind my current pattern. These colors seem too bright for the wall. The wall is something we gotta look at all the time, right? If it's a red wall, it's gonna be harsh on the eyes. What's a nano camo? Something to liven up things in this room. Table patterns? This is the one I got. Uh, these are so expensive! I don't wanna spend money! Let's get this wall. Can't- oh, there's more! Oh, okay. This on the wall? <laughs> hey, whoa, these ones are so expensive. Holy crap. I can't afford that. Wow. Is that boss? Is that a... Oh my god. <laughs> oh, well, if we're gonna change it, I do feel like a pattern would be more interesting than just the color change. These are so expensive, though. Oh my gosh. What about this one? It's kind of simple, but it's a red background. Uh... Oh, how about we look at tables again? Oh, there's only one page for tables. Okay. Well... Why don't we go with yellow table then? Oh, that looks so weird. I don't like it. Oh, well. Well, let's leave it at that for now. <laughs> don't spend all my money in one day. Nothing new. It'll tell me when something's new, right? With a little exclamation mark. Today is December 17. A white knight just beat me up. Wow. I'm fucking crying right now, let me tell you the story. I was going home after buying groceries at the store. I was very tired because I had to line up for hours just to buy milk. And when I'm finally out of there, a group of three white knights stopped me and started asking for my ID, and also wanted to see my bag to check if I wasn't a scalper. And once they saw everything was in order, they asked me for a military service ID, and just... What the fuck? Why would I have that on me? And there's no enforced conscription anymore. It doesn't make sense. And because I didn't have it on me, they asked for money, or else they'd plant drugs on me. I of course refused, but they'd lose their patience, and one of them hit me right in my temple with a gun. I was bleeding like crazy on the floor, so they just took my groceries and left. Holy shit, man. I fucking hate this place. I hate it so much. I want to leave this fucking hellhole. I'm so tired of this shit every fucking day. Then for some reason, this thread got closed. I've been lucky to never have that kind of problem with the White Knights, I guess. Well, if you don't go outside, you can't get bothered. But that does suck. Crime rates increasing, White Knights abusing their power. What's the like about this city? Nothing. Streaming Chan! Anyone see last night's escapade? She was at the Valhalla bar. It was alright. Bartender was a cutie, but man is she full of herself. 
Don't care, I'm going next week and ask her for a date. We all know you won't. Pretty sure nobody here has the guts to ask someone out. Is she still sleeping? Yeah... I wonder if there's illegal activity going on there. Like, why would you need to be careful with what you say? Everybody should be careful about what they say at all times. Maybe they're avoiding casual racism. <laughs> um. Even streaming Chan's fans want her to rest. Yeah. But she... Well, if she rests, she won't get money, right? If she's not streaming, she won't get money. Then she can't live. Apollo Bank is getting attacked. And no one is reporting on it. Quincy doesn't want to take the blame. What a fucking coward. It looks like someone's inside the bank with a huge bomb threatening to blow up the building. Any demands. They want Quincy to quit and the White Knights disbanded. So they're actually helping the protesters? Uh, that's not the way to help people. Hmm. This fucking place law. That about sums it up. May the gods guide say to safety. All of these topics are kind of like... painfully topical. Alarms rise as the Apollo Trust Bank suffers terrorist attack. Updating. Hijack screens at the downtown Casanova announced what seems to be a terrorist threat aimed at the Apollo Trust Bank. The information suggests that there is a unidentified bomber inside the building. The White Knights' counterterrorism unit responded to the threat immediately. However, the bank was then locked down by an external network attack. Dual threat, says CTU's Chloe Bauer. CTU? Uh... I don't know. Something training unit? The bank has been sealed shut using its own disaster prevention system. However, none of the terminals at the bank were working at the time. The building is basically sealed at this point. The hostages are trapped. Oh no. Was the bank in- Oh god, that's- That sounds so serious. It should be on TV 24-7. Pollution to reach historic levels next year. Even though most countries have adapted their economies to solve climate change, Glitch City still relies on ancient technologies in order to keep costs low and profits high. As a result of this, we'll be experiencing an increase in air pollution next year. Our contamination levels will force the whole population to move away from a lot of areas within the city. The soil is dying at an alarming pace, said experts in a report. Having to buy special raincoats and umbrellas does suck. But experts say, you better get used to it. How long until someone says pollution is good? There is a book. This last part here kind of reminds me of something I saw recently about how rich people, on average, spend less money than poor people. And they illustrated this with an um, example of buying a pair of leather boots. Somebody rich can afford to buy, say, a $500 of leather boots, and they can last for 10 years, because it's good quality. But then poor people, they can't afford the $500, so they end up buying boots that are like $20. They break easily, and if the rich person was using their nice boots for 10 years, then maybe the poor person has to buy like 20,000 pairs of the crappy boots. Which eventually amounts to being more than the price of the good boots, and all the while the poor person having lower quality boots the whole time. The people who are poor end up having to spend more. Poor people live in Glitch City? Glitch City people have to pay more. What did you want to buy again, Jill? Did you say something about... something? Uh... A fan. That's right. Even though it's winter. Where is the fan? Did I miss it? Wait, where is the fan? I don't see a fan. Did I buy it already? Joker Cyclone? Oh, it's not called fan. It's called a cyclone. <laughs> okay, sure. Somebody suggested that I should buy the shoulder massager too. For those days where you've built up too much tension. So I guess I will. I am a little bit wary about my funds though, because I feel like one of these days, 
they're suddenly gonna be like, hey, there's an emergency, and you gotta spend like 20 bajillion thousand dollars, and I'm not gonna have it. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Jill bought what she wanted, and she's really pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. Cool. Where's the fan? Right here. Good. So the shoulder massager. Ah. <laughs> if I click on her, she's happy. Well, that's good. Can I click on anything else? Not really. <laughs> well, I hope you're happy, Jill. Saturday. Good evening. Huh? I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. But we're kind of close to the neighborhood, right? Maybe people don't want to come because of that. <sighs> you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with a bar closing soon. And I don't have that much money myself to begin with. I wonder if any bar has used impending closure as a means of getting their employees to work. Seems that the total opposite would happen. Not to mention, I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. What did you say? Nothing important. Gil isn't back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. That girl's still here? <gasps> Did she stay overnight? Yup. She was sleeping so peacefully, I felt bad about waking her up. So, would you mind doing that for me? Actually, yes, I mind. But you're the boss, and it's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. No, she decided to walk in here herself. I'm kind of wondering if the camera was on the whole night, though. Sorry about that. Hey, young lady. Sleep another hour, and we'll have to start charging you a motel fee. Uh... Oh my god, it's Saturday morning, people. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, right! Oh, the shoddy downtown bar! Let's see, all my gear is in place. And neither my pants nor my <gasps> panties sure or bra have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender! Good morning! Good evening. Wait, she's been here a whole day then, from night to the next night. Evening? Oh well, it's the best night, or day of sleep I've had in quite some time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. Don't worry. You're so nice, flat bartender! Thanks for taking care of me! Bye! <laughs> well, I have a feeling that's not gonna be the last we see of her. But damn, she still had all that energy built up from last time. I was hoping to get a, you know, an actual chat in with her, but that might not happen today. Well, at least I'm okay. Yeah, I feel okay. Oh god. Hello, guys and gals! Streaming chance back in action with her batteries reloaded! Ah! The moon, it burns! I feel like some neighbors are gonna get mad at me soon. <laughs> I feel like I've just unleashed something terrible onto the world. Come on, it's not that bad. Say, what's this bottle? A uh, client gave it to me yesterday. A gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. It's some sort of rum. Rum? Nice. Want me to serve you a bit of it? Hmm, yeah, sure. Rum. How come... It says bottled drinks, but then, like, when we roll over it, it only says bottled. That's weird. Grandpa booze. It seems like we might still be missing something here, but okay, cool. 
We don't need to do anything. Here. All right. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office, thanks. Anytime. Okay, then. Wow, that was a long intro part. I don't even know what we've heard and haven't heard. <laughs> to be honest. Like, uh, have we gotten anything new? I feel like I wouldn't recognize it, even if I did, because it doesn't really tell me. Have I heard your love is a drug? That's the one that we bought, right? Maybe we'll have that in here. Feel like I haven't seen these ones? I don't know. I wish it would have like a new next to it or something. I just don't know which ones I've heard or not. March of the White Knight. Whoa, that sounds pretty bumping. Time to serve, mix, and change lives. <laughs> Wait, that's not how it goes. Nah, same difference. <sighs> no one here to retort. Man, it feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. <sighs> wow, okay, um... I don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> Is this exactly what we were talking about yesterday with Jamie? Brain uploading? What kind of voice would they have? Good evening. <laughs> Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx. W welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it. Let's give this, uh, brain a blue fairy. Oh, okay? Okay, what do we suspect went on here? They lost their body? And then... No, I don't even have a guess. <laughs> I don't even know. Maybe we'll... Well, I kind of want them talking. Do I want to make them that drunk? Uh... No, you know what? No, we should double this drink. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two... Boom, 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 boom. One of these will make all your teeth turn blue. Hope you brush them well. <sighs> they don't have any teeth. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Here you go. Nice, yeah. This is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at my own voice for it. So, um, how are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink stuff? And eat. I have the same system, Lulum do. Can I ask you something, um, miss? Call me Taylor. Just Taylor. Oh, it's a woman. Or, well, she's a miss. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. <laughs> We're being hit on by a brain! Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, okay, just Taylor. Nah, too easy. You are a brain in a jar, right? I'm sure not a hologram, of that I'm sure. Yup, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. So, how, why? What? Does my handsomeness make you speechless? Handsomeness? Do brains have genders? I guess that's not really even a thing. Okay, whatever. You're Taylor. You're just Taylor. You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? What are you talking out of right now? Is there like a speaker in this little red part? It's a jar. How did you roll in here? What are your legs like? Wheels? You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jars scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, 
We are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? Not out of exasperation or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Yeah, I do. Sure. What brings one of our world's five brains in jars to this place, though? Just five? Then you're really rare, right? Can I have a picture with you? And an autograph? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in uh, quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? Sadly, no. Otherwise, I'd remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Uh, it's Jill. Jill? That's a really cute name. Thank you. <laughs> Is she creeped out? I don't know. We see a lot of things as a bartender, though. This might not be the weirdest thing. Say, weren't you weird of going outside today? What with all the commotion around and all? Hmm, speaking of the bank stuff. So the bank is on lockdown right now, but then... What about Say? I'm so worried. Oh god, she's gonna come back, right? She better. We better not see her on the news. It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. But I'm here for work. I'm here to make a living. You're here for pleasure. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic, did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so... happy. Or flirty. Well, I was alive. Oh, you don't consider yourself alive? My body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of Black Mirror. A lot of things we've talked about so far remind me of Black Mirror. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Uh... It depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright then, yeah, I'll make you happy. One beer to make Taylor happy, and it'll be big on the house. I say as I beg for tips from you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, one, two. One, two. All mixed. Oh my god, what did I miss this time? One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Oh, I forgot this. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here, a beer. Oh, yes. No matter what happens, beer is always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday, I was talking to a client about brain uploads. You were? Yeah. We were talking about how, even if you upload your brain, you'd still be here. I've thought about that, too. But you didn't upload your brain, right? You are the brain. Do you think that you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? Like, would she remember everything? Like waking up someplace else and so on? Maybe we close our eyes and then we wake up and then we're in the cybernetic environment already. Hmm, that's an interesting question. I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a lilum. One of the brains is being used in such an experiment, actually. They can make a functional lilum. Unfortunately, the wiring and other such stuff makes it look more creepy than anything. They aren't transferring his identity or anything, though. Just wiring him to a body. Not transferring his identity? What does that mean? Oh. Well, if he gets a new body, how do you not transfer the identity? You'd think someone would rather do that than float around exposed in a jar. I have to admit, the whole brain thing does look creepy. But the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Well, I mean, you're a brain in a jar. 
But if you came in as a really grotesque thing, then I might be more scared. Because you don't look threatening right now. You just look like some alien mastermind thing. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you saw yourself like this for the first time? Do you have eyes? Does the computer see for you? It was quite a shock, actually. It didn't last too long, though. I never was too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. <laughs> you know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. Oh... If you want to call that a downside. If you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. Why though? Lilum can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Why can't you do that? Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out how exactly you work. Hmm, yeah, you're right. Who is that? Yellow? Hey, Jill! Oh, Alma. Just, oh, Alma? Where is the courtesy one would expect from plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? Happy? Not when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. Hmm? Woohoo! You hurt my feelings with that, darling. Sorry, you don't see talking to disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in little maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. N nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic, and have at least one face. <laughs> That's... well... I'm sure the computer could generate something for you, but this person specifically chose to appear as a brain in a jar, so I think they're pretty proud of it. Yeah, by the way, love, your love is a drug. Kira Miki's song is playing. Hmm, I know just what to strive for then. Just kidding. It'll make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's a bartender, then I don't have a problem with that. Awesome. I'll pay for your next drink then. It's a rich brain. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. Maybe because I made him a big one. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. He's already had two. Okay, then. Cobalt Velvet. Cobalt Velvet. As a bartender, I'm guessing we see a lot of people try to pick up other people too. It's, it should be a pretty familiar sight. And then the thing Dorothy was saying earlier about how, oh, I haven't found anybody to satisfy me on a deep spiritual level in a long time. I don't know. Well, a bar is not really a place where you would seek a deep spiritual experience, so I guess... I mean, whatever then. <laughs> Alma probably likes a big. It's like champagne served on a cup that had a bit of cola left. That sounds disgusting. On the rocks and mixed. Your drink. Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. Well, that's a compliment. We sound like we're good friends. <sighs> it feels like it's been longer. Oh, shut up. You love me and you know it. So, you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy... Speaking of which, where's Pablo? Gillian. Archimedes. <laughs> I don't know. Adventuring or something. Anyways, 
The other guy served me the first the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving, and... I don't know, I feel like she just gets me. Would you say that my love for you is like a drug? There's this... chemistry. We click. We click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than with many other people is kind of sad, though. No, why? It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late and I've gotta go. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. Bye. Please come again. That tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Yeah, but he was just a guy looking for a drink. He didn't really... He was a little bit flirty with everybody, but it's okay. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. There is a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I actually met one. Sayama, how many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five si sorry, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. Are you the oldest? So you're the eldest one? No, I'm actually the middle kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A? Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. Well, I thought your parents planned it out. But no, it was just random. My sister Carlotta's the eldest one. Then there's Diana, just before me. Then comes Eva, and at the bottom lies Bella. <clears throat> Sorry. The youngest one is Bernardo. Bella? Oh. That's the second time Alma corrected herself. I think the brother might be trans. You've never been alone, I'm guessing. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Everyone's a product of their upbringing, right? So if she grew up in a really rowdy household and now she's living by herself, maybe that's why she's constantly seeking company by dating a lot of guys. And conversely, maybe I'm like an only child or something. So even though I live by myself, I don't really have that urge to find a warm body for the night. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Carlotta had already moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention, I visit them almost every day. So you do live with them then, <laughs> basically. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. Yeah, that does sound like some kind of a family thing. She left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. I mean the seeking out people part, okay? Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married the guy at 20. Yeah, I don't know, man. Your, your personal happiness is important, but if it's at the cost of the child you brought into the world, I don't think so. She didn't even think about that when marrying a guy she had only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? Ah! You can see that her hand is mechanical. Didn't Donovan say that? Well, how much of her is mechanical? I don't know. Hmm. But even up until the wrist, it looks pretty mechanical here. Helps with the typing? Sure, there wasn't one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam. Kiss cam? I was going out with a guy my little sister introduced to me. Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later, the kiss cam focused on us and instead of kissing me, he proposed. 
What? I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take it you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss camp. We went out for like three weeks! Well, that's true. You shouldn't accept it in that case. He's crazy. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to God can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. It's not! That sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex. Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you in their bed. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm? What's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? A good enough service, I'm guessing. Well, it's kind of illegitimate. <laughs> ka ki ka seek ka seek Hmm, interesting name. What does it mean? Kasik's the name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see. Do you want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. I don't have too many good memories where rum's involved. Get me a fringe weaver instead, will you? Alright. Fringe weaver is the one that's like super mega Carmotrine town. The one with nine, right? It's like drinking ethylic alcohol with a spoonful of sugar. Might as well make it big. No, that's it. All aged and mixed. One extra big fringe weaver for my favorite friend. So what kind of memories do you have with rum? Nothing you need to worry about. Okay. Yeah, we don't bribe. If you want to share, you share. If you don't, I'm not gonna, um, you know, be like, Hey, please share with me. Especially because we're not really friends, right? We're a client and a bartender. Alright, now it's my turn to ask the questions. About me. What kind of family is your family? Well... How did I know? I did get that impression. <laughs> I'm an only child. My mom and my dad split amicably. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Hum. Didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? Well, being a bartender might be part of it. I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. Hey, I'm an only child, and I used to play the violin too. Why made you stop? I don't know, I just kinda said, that's it, one day and stop. What about cousins or the rest of your family? Mm, I see very little of them, actually. Hmm, another thing we have in common. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. France? That's why... That's why Jill's mom wants to dote on her and give her money and a good Christmas gift because she's not around. So your mom's French? Yup. Can you speak French? I'm sorry, I can't. Okay, wait. I'm gonna try to sound this out on Google Translate, and we'll see how it goes. Hold on. <laughs> what does that even mean? Mon aeroglycer es plane de... de anguille? Mon aeroglycer est plane d'anguille. Mon aeroglycer est plane anguille. Hey, I mean, that was kind of close. Kind of. My hovercraft is full of eels. <laughs> what? Oh, what does that mean? Rubbish? I don't know. I can't speak French. I did try, though. But college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing. I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard-pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. What if you came in already? We wouldn't know. All of my mom's side of the family lives here. 
The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. But yeah, there is a primer on my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist, and you call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. Please don't, ever. Sounds like something somebody would say to make bartenders sound sophisticated. <laughs> See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. Oh, that sounds so professional. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Oh, so you are kind of like a hacker bounty hunter, like we mentioned the first time you came here. Be it Glitch City or anywhere else in the world, they need security, I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info like some sort of a mercenary, though. That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Mix a holding sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating pics from a guy's cell phone? You hacked into my cell phone too! A mostly honest job, sheesh. What made you become a hacker, by the way? <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore her. I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey. So, when I started college, I took a course on system security. It felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching that security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. Yeah, internet-related fields are always the kind where you gotta keep your knowledge up to date or else you'll be left in the dust. It's not exactly something unchanging, like math. So it's kind of like an always-evolving puzzle. A puzzle I helped to make harder at that. Huh. I didn't think about it that way. It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Well, I kind of know what you mean. Not just hacking, but like, getting code to work in general. Spend forever on it, and then you run it, and then it doesn't work, and then you go back, and you realize you put like an extra semicolon or a comma somewhere, and then you fix it, and it finally works, and it's like, yes! <laughs> Will you have anything else? Hmm, I'll have a classy drink. Any classy drink. Here goes nothing. A classy drink. Are any of these considered classy? We don't know. Classy drink. Mercury Blast. What haven't we made before in the classy drinks? Oh, we've made everything. Mmm. Something with a lot of Carmotrine? But Alma's probably not a person that's easy to get drunk. Sweet, classy, happy. 8 out of 10 smug assholes would recommend it, but they're too busy being smug assholes. Okay, let's do this one. Dun, 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 dun. Mm, age? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here. Oh, bravo, you made me very happy. Woohoo, I guess. You know, sometimes I feel like you know me better than all the guys I've been with. I feel compelled to ask how many guys you've been with. If we're talking about serious, long-lasting relationships, just a handful. Casual dating and one-night stands, on the other hand. Why do that? Why go through so many people? Hey, it's not like I take every guy I see to bed. Who do you take me for? You know what I mean. 
Yeah, yeah. That's something I don't have an answer to, actually. Well, I, I do think it has to do with upbringing and environment and all that, but that's a puzzle that you'll probably have to figure out yourself. Maybe I'm just a romantic that loves having someone to cuddle with. Maybe I just get lonely. Maybe there's a deep-seated psychological reason behind it all. Maybe I'm just horny. Whatever the case, I just kind of feel like it's a quest I shouldn't give up yet. Well, it's not like I'm too different. Until recently, I do had a streak of one-night stands. Really? What made you stop? Reasons. What is it? Tell me! Maybe later. It's time for my break. Come with me. Huh? Why? Can't I stay here away from the cold? I don't trust you. You could fit a bottle between those tits of yours and nobody would know. Why not just say please come and let's keep talking at the back of the bar? You got the message. Now come. <laughs> Guide me then. Boss, I'm taking my break. Call me if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. 